Okay, my Math 6A friends. Um, I told you guys I would start with a video on 3.5, which I know that we did part of 3.5 in class. Um, but um, that will just get us started. I'm going to try to do two videos today, but we'll see. Um, so far, the stress is real around here. Um, okay, so uh, a summary of um, curve sketching. Um, we talked about that uh, a good thing to think about is the domain. They call it the A through G in your textbook, and the, um, that's where it's defined. B is the intercepts. Remember to find the x-intercept. You let y equal 0 and solve for x. Uh, and to find the y-intercept, you let x equal 0 and solve for y. Um, symmetry, the test for even functions, uh, sym symmetric about the y-axis, is to test whether f of negative x equals f of x then you'll know it's an even function if that's true uh, for all x. And um, for odd functions, uh, that's uh, uh, origin symmetry, that f of negative x equals negative of f of x. Um, and then there's periodic functions too, like sine and cosine and tangent. And um, those are um, uh, sym symmetric if, and this is your period. So for sine, the period's 2 pi, and tangent, the period's 2 pi. And so if f of x plus your period equals f of x, then you know it's a periodic function. Okay, then we spent some time looking at the asymptotes um, and how to find the asymptote. Um, you know that it has a uh, vertical asymptote uh, if you have a rational function. And what that means is it has a numerator and a denominator. So a lot of people are asking me, when do you know it's going to have a, um, a vertical asymptote. Well, it has to have a denominator. And, um, and so, and it's when that reduced fraction, uh, when that denominator is equal to zero. So reduced means it doesn't have any common factors with the numerator. Uh, then that's a, a vertical asymptote. And you can, you can test if your vertical asymptote is at A, whether or not it's going to infinity or negative infinity on, um, on the left side of A and on the right side of A. Is it going to positive infinity or negative infinity? And then the horizontal asymptote, we learned about the horizontal asymptote in the last section. And that horizontal asymptote is um, uh, when uh, you find the limit as x goes to negative infinity and as x goes to positive infinity. And, um, and on most functions, um, L is the same point, whatever that limit is. Uh, for polynomials, uh, it might be um, uh, different. Uh, but on rational expressions, so I guess that's what I should say, is on rational expressions, um, oh, and you wouldn't have a horizontal asymptote on a polynomial, huh, duh. Anyway, on rational uh, functions, it would be the same. If you had a square root, though, in it, or absolute value in it, then we talked about you, that looking at negative infinity and positive infinity, you have to look at both. And then the slant asymptote we talked about uh, is if you don't have a horizontal asymptote, it's possible that you have a slant asymptote uh, and, or an oblique asymptote. Slant means it's a line, uh, and oblique means it could be something other than a line, like a polynomial. And ours actually, in our book, are all lines, so I guess I'll just focus on that. And uh, what you do to find it is you use long division, and sometimes you can use synthetic division as well. Uh, if we have an example where we can do synthetic division, I'll try to remember how to do that. Um, you guys, without you guys to remind me, what will I do? Um, and so, uh, and then E and F is the things that the first derivative tells you. The first derivative tells you where there's possible local minimums, local maximums, absolute ma maximum, and absolute minimums. It also tells you where the function's increasing and decreasing. Now, remember how you find the absolute maximum on a graph is if it has endpoints, you test all of the critical points and the endpoints, and the highest one is the absolute max. And how you find the absolute min is you test all of the endpoints and the critical points, and the lowest one is the absolute um, min. Um, and then uh, the second derivative, the kind of things the second derivative tells you are whether it's concave up or concave down, um, and also some inflection points. So we've practiced these things out of context, and now they're going to have us kind of put the whole thing together. I moved over to the next page where I had this lovely graph. Um, and, um, and so on this, on this page uh, is uh, a graph that has um, 
s of x equals 3x plus 5 divided by x plus 2, and they're uh, telling us that, hey, where the denominator is 0 is where the vertical asymptote is. I know that's hard to see on this uh, computer screen, but um, this is uh, x equals negative 2 is the vertical asymptote. Now, it's important when you, someone asks you the vertical asymptote that you don't say negative 2. You say x equals negative 2. It needs to be a vertical line. And then the horizontal asymptote, uh, how you would find it is you find the limit, um, you find the limit as 3x plus 5 over x plus 2 goes to uh, plus or minus infinity. And I can do dominant term analysis here, and this is the same as the limit as 3x, that's the dominant term in the numerator, over 1x, dominant term in the denominator. Um, and then the x's uh, would reduce out, so that's 3. And so the horizontal asymptote is at y equals 3. And so you see the horizontal asymptote there. Now one thing I mentioned in class is that it's possible for a graph to cross the horizontal asymptote at more than one spot, in fact. Um, and so, uh, but you do not cross, the graph will not cross the vertical asymptote. Okay, and then this is a, a little example on something that has a, an oblique asymptote or a slant asymptote. They called it here on this picture I got off of the internet. They called it an oblique asymptote, but since it's a line, it is a slant asymptote. And, um, and the idea here that the asymptote, well, here's the vertical asymptote too. I didn't mention that too. That's where the denominator is zero. And, um, and so the idea here is what's happening as x goes to infinity. And as x goes to infinity, 1 over x minus 2, um, this is equation has been written in uh, after they've long divided it, um, but that's going to 0 at infinity because 1 over uh, x is a uh, dominant term analysis would be going to um, 0, right, as x goes to infinity. 1 over infinity is 0. And uh, so this part's going to 0. And this part's going to negative infinity, but I want to know how does it look as it goes to negative infinity and how it looks like. It looks like y equals negative x plus 4. So that's the equation of the slant asymptote. And as my graph, as my x's get close to negative infinity, they're getting close to that line. And as my x's get po close to positive infinity, they're getting close to that line. Okay, so we're going to try one of those, and so we're on the next page there, and this is example uh, 48, 46 rather, sorry, 46 in your, um, in, from your textbook, and it's asking us to verify that the graph of the function does not have a horizontal asymptote. So that's the first thing that we're wanting to look at, is does it have a horizontal asymptote? And the answer is, they're saying it doesn't, and they want us to verify it. So if we looked at the limit of our function as x goes to plus or minus infinity, we have this function, 4x to the third minus 10x to the second minus 11x plus 1 over x squared minus 3x. If I'm trying to find that limit, I'm going to be doing dominant term analysis on that, and that's the biggest in the numerator, uh, and so that's the limit. I see I need more room here. Uh, of 4x to the third over x to the second. And when I reduce that, um, x to the third divided by x to the second, this is going to be the limit as x goes to plus or minus infinity of 4x. Do you guys agree? And so at infinity, this is going to infinity. At negative infinity, this is going to negative infinity. So this is equal to plus or minus infinity, and that's how we know it doesn't have a horizontal asymptote. So if it had a horizontal asymptote, then it would have a, be going to like a number 6 or whatever have you. Okay, the next thing they asked us to do is to find the vertical asymptote. And, uh, and so I want to find the vertical asymptote. How you do that is you make sure that your function here is reduced. And you can see that the numerator with four terms there would be difficult to, uh, to factor. But the denominator uh, factors as x times x minus 3. So, um, and I'm going to show you a way, of, so our denominator, x squared minus 3x, equals 0, right? 
and I'm going to show you a way to verify that it's reduced equals zero. So this gives us x equals zero, that's one vertical asymptote, and x equals three is another possible vertical asymptote. Now how I know, and you guys probably all remember this, how I know that, that, um, that it didn't have a common factor of x with the numerator, well I can see that by inspection because the numerator doesn't have a common factor of x. And so, um, but I, if I plug in x is zero in the numerator, and if I get zero, then I'll know, wait a minute, there was a common factor, but I don't, I get one. And if I plug in three, because now I'm asking you, well, is there a common factor of x minus three, the x minus three, would it have reduced out? Well, if you plug in three, you should get zero uh, if there is a common factor. And if you don't get zero, uh, then there wasn't a common factor. So when I plug in three there, I get negative 80, and I might have made a mistake and without, without my friends to help me and make sure that I'm okay, but I don't get zero. Um, and so this is not a common factor. And so I know those are both vertical asymptotes. I can go over here on my gr graph and put the vertical asymptote. So at x equals zero, I know that the, the way the graph is that you can barely see that I'm drawing in the vertical asymptote. So x equals zero was right there, and I think x equals three will be a little easier to see. So here's x equals three. Now it's asking me to find the slant asymptote, and I can see the slant asymptote here. Can you guys see it right there? There it is gonna be, right? So we're gonna look for the equation of the slant asymptote. How you do it is by using long division. On this particular problem, you cannot um, you cannot use synthetic division because it has to your denominator has to look like x minus r, and I have x squared, so I, I I'm going to have to use long division to do this. So um, if you're having trouble with long division, um, uh, Andrea uh, can help you in uh, SI. And, uh, and he's gonna have a session on Friday. And I can also help you with long division as soon as I figure out how to do the, um, the confer zoom. Um, that's my next goal. So videos are first and confer zoom is my next goal. Uh, and I really appreciate you guys being patient. So I'm gonna divide in here x squared minus three x into four x cubed minus 10 x squared minus 11 x plus one. And um, you don't want to have any missing terms uh, here or here. And so you might be saying, hey, you have a missing term right there. And um, I'm going to agree with you, and I'm going to put plus zero. And so I'm going to back this up and put but plus zero there. Um, I could probably get away without out doing this, uh, but just to be extra careful. And so now I have x squared, x, and x to the zero, no x x cubed, x to the second, x, and no x. So I have the whole thing. And then what you do first is you divide your leaders. So right now, my leaders, so you're gonna divide, D for divide, divide leaders. And uh, that's gonna be four x to the third, that's the leader, that's the lead of this polynomial, um, that, that's my dividend, divided by x to the second. So long story short, I get 4x. And then where I want to put that 4x at that I just got, it really doesn't matter that much. Um, you can put it anywhere up here. Uh, I prefer to line it up with the x's though um, because that helps me. So 4x is going to go right there. And, um, and then I'm going um, to multiply. And what am I going to multiply? I'm going to multiply 4x times this trinomial. I turned it into a trinomial and I'm gonna lay out the pieces that I get. So 4x times x squared is 4x cubed. 4x times minus 3x is minus 12x squared. 4x times zero is zero, and it doesn't matter if I put plus zero or minus zero, so I'm just gonna put my zero there. And, uh, and now, the, so the process of doing the division is can you see if I wrote it over here? No, I write it here. Is divide, multiply, we just did the multiply step. Subtract is the next step. And that's where people lose it, is on subtract. Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna subtract this. 
And subtract has two steps. Subtract ha the two steps to subtract are distribute the negative and then and, and then to essentially add, combine like terms, right? And so um, when I go, I'm going to see if I can be tricky with the purple pen. We'll see. I don't know if you can even see the pink pen. Um, and so um, I hope you can. I pray you can. So a negative times a positive is a negative. So I'm distributing. A negative times a, a, a negative is a positive. I'm distributing. A negative times... Um, a positive is a negative, and that's silly, I know, because it's on zero. And now I'm going to add. And uh, when you add, you just combine like terms. So 4x to the third minus 4x to the third is zero. If you didn't get zero on your leader there, then you have made a mistake. And then what you get is what you get. And so I'm going to have here uh, minus 10x squared plus 12x squared is 2x squared. And then negative 11x minus 0, you notice how that made it where it fit there, and uh, makes negative 11x, 0 is like terms with everyone, and then plus uh, 1. And that plus 1 is going to be the next step, so subtract was really distribute the negative and then add, and then the next step is bring down. And so some people, my cousin told me this, uh, when she was just a tiny little girl, she told me the div long division algorithm is daddy, mommy, sister, brother. And I was like, what? Um, and uh, But she's right. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. And so we're going to bring down only the one. So here comes the one down. And now we have nothing left to bring down. So we have one more time through the algorithm. Um, but uh, we, um, And so the, next, the first step, um, you repeat on your algorithm. I don't know, can, are you seeing repeat? Repeat, and so you would do that division again with the leader. The new leader is um, 2x to the second, and you're dividing that by x to the second, and you get 2. So you put here plus 2, because it's positive, and, uh, and then you do the multiply again. I'm going to show you a shortcut, um, and so you guys are uh, you're going to be happy about that. So here um, I'm multiplying, so I'm going to get negative 6x and I get plus zero, and I'm going to do the subtract step with my pink pin. Subtract, right? Distribute the negative, distribute the negative, and add. So the leader goes away, and if it doesn't, you've made a mistake, and I get negative 5x, uh, and then I get pl plus one. So uh, my value, if have I got where I'm not writing where you can see it, I'm almost in, and that's one thing I have to watch myself on very carefully on this. And, um, and so um, anyway, so that means that y could be written like this. Uh, the quotient plus the remainder over the divisor. So this right here is our quotient. So y equals 4x plus 2 plus our remainder, here's our remainder, negative 5x plus 1 over our divisor, and there's our divisor, x squared minus 3x. And what we're looking at is the limit of this as x goes to plus or minus infinity, right? So uh, to plus or minus infinity, oh, I got where I wasn't seeing, you weren't seeing, oh, 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 I'll give myself the rest of the paper and not have that happen again because um, that could cause a cuss word and um, this is a kid channel so we don't talk that way. Um, okay so at infinity this part right here dominant term analysis negative 5x over x squared is negative 5 over x and so negative 5 over x as I go to infinity is going to zero. As I go to negative infinity it's going to zero. If you're like what the heck how do you know that? Go back and do the limits uh, that they had in, is it 3.4 where they had those limits? I think it is. Go back and do those limits. Um, and so, and this part right here is going to positive or negative infinity, depending on which one I'm going to, right? And so that right there is the slant asymptote. So do you friends see the shortcut that I was going to tell you about? Uh, do you guys see what I was going to say? 
on shortcut is that I don't really care about the remainder because the remainder is going to be going to zero. So it is really just the quotient is my slant asymptote. And so I want to put that slant asymptote on my grid over here. And I notice that if I'm going to put that on my grid, that, um, that I want to pick uh, some values so that we can kind of see it going on there. So if I pick, like, for example, if I pick uh, x is 10, I'm just looking at the, the grid there, and we did this in class, that's 42. All I need is two points to draw the line. Uh, I'm going to choose 5, and that's 22. 5 times... Okay, so I have to plot those points here uh, to draw it on there. Uh, so 10, 42. So 10, uh, 10, 20, 30, 42 is right there. And uh, 5, 22, 20, 2 is right there. And I'm not actually sure what side the 42 is of on my thing. I, I'm gonna. It, it, it doesn't matter. It could be over it or it could be under it. If I, I could probably get another point. I, I think I'm guessing that it was probably a little over it. It's it's difficult because that's a a, a range of 10 there. Um, but we're just putting it on here just so that we can kind of see where it's kind of going. Um, and so then I'm gonna draw my dotted line in here with my handy dandy ruler for my slant asymptote. And so you can kind of see that it's getting closer. It might cross in here and it might not. Um, there's a way of finding out if it crosses. Uh, and um, how you find out if it crosses uh, I know that and now I'm not thinking, I'm blanking out on uh, oh, oh, where you can find out where it crosses. Um, on that. I'll have to come back on that because now I'm blinking out on um, how to do that. Uh, I know how to find out if it crosses the horizontal asymptote. You set it equal to what your horizontal, you set this equal to what your horizontal asymptote is and solve it. I bet you set it equal to that and solve it to see if it crosses at any point. It certainly can. Yeah, that's what you do. Um, and and we're not, we're not interested. We're, we don't care if it crosses or not at this moment. Okay, so we're gonna go, I'm gonna go on, and this is another problem that we had done in class, but we didn't do the whole thing. And Andrea finished it for me uh, in, um, uh, in, the, uh, in your guys' SI. So uh, here we go, you guys ready? Um, and so um, this is problem 19 out of your textbook. Uh, we're gonna look at the domain, and the domain is where you can see that the numerator and the denominator on 19 aren't going to have any common factors. The domain is going to be, you want to exclude any point that makes your denominator equal to zero. And, um, and so uh, uh, if you want just the real solutions of this, you can subtract one um, and take the cube root, which will be x equals negative one. When I take the cube root of negative one, I get negative one. Um, if you want the other solutions to this, you could factor it using your cube formula, and two of those solutions are complex. So if you wanted to do that, you can. So the domain really is, um, is really x is not equal to negative 1, right? And, and you can write that real good and fancy. If you want, you can say, um, with set notation, you can say the domain d equals the set of x such that uh, x is an element of the real numbers, um, and x is not equal to negative 1, if you wanted to get real good and fancy. Uh, but I have to admit that x, e x is not negative 1, uh, I would have been thrilled with. Okay, now the x-intercept is where you let y equals 0. So we let y equals 0. So this is going to be 0 equals x to the third over x to the third plus 1. When I solve this, I would uh, multiply both sides by x to the third plus 1. And when you multiply it by 0, you get 0 equals x to the third. And, um, and then that tells you that x equals uh, 0. So that gives us the ordered pair 0, 0. x is 0, y is 0. Boink. And then the y-intercept, you let x equal 0, and you plug it in, y equals 0 cubed over 0 cubed plus 1. 
I've been careful with parentheses if that had been a negative, um, but it's not. So this is equal to zero, and I probably, this is a no done moment, right? Um, probably should have known that. Uh, and, um, but uh, I'm finding it, right? And then the vertical asymptote is where your denominator is equal to zero. Um, and so that's at x equals negative one. Then your horizontal asymptote, you look at the limit as x goes to plus or minus infinity of x to the third over x to the third plus one. And uh, dominant term analysis, this is the limit as we go to x to infinity and negative infinity of x to the third over x to the third, which is the limit um, of one. And remember, you can only use dominant term analysis uh, when you're going to um, plus or minus infinity, right? So you can't whip that out if your limit is going to two or something like that. So you need to be really careful and cautious about that. Uh, and so my horizontal asymptote is y equals 1. That means it doesn't have a slant asymptote and so, uh, or an oblique asymptote. It either has a horizontal asymptote or a slant asymptote or an oblique asymptote. It doesn't have both. Okay, now increasing, and, and I kind of made this like that on your paper, and I realized that was really silly the way I did that, uh, but these are... I, I, maybe no space I should have had, maybe a comma in between, but these are the things that we're going to be finding um, here. And, and all of these things are found by using the first derivative. So if you look up above, I found the first derivative and I cleaned it up. And if you want to verify that that is the first derivative and clean it up yourself, more power to you. So the first derivative I found to make uh, the time a little shorter here, but you can go and find this first derivative using the quotient rule. And, and so, um, so we're going to look at when the first derivative is equal to 0. And that's when the numerator is 0. So that's 3x squared equals 0. So that's when x is equal to 0. And I can see that this is multiplicity 2. Uh, and that means that when I go to do my sign table, it's not going to alternate on 0 because the multiplicity is even. Um, and sometimes that's helpful to know. Uh, and then I want to know where it's, um, where it's undefined, and it's undefined, um, the first derivative is undefined, at x equals negative 1, um, which, uh, looking at the denominator, remember, x to the third plus 1 raised to the second, and when I solve that, take the square root of both sides, you get x to the third plus 1, and then you've got your, um, uh, you know, solving down, uh, to get to that, you can get to the, the same thing we had, and x is equal to negative 1. Um, and so, uh, and that's not in the domain. And in fact, um, we already know that x equals negative 1 uh, is a uh, vertical asymptote, right? So I like to make a note to myself on that. Then the next thing I do is I do a, a number line. You don't have to do a number line. I notice that your book... Uh, doesn't always do a number line. They kind of put things in a table, and I'm okay with that too. And the book uses the sign chart, and I'm okay with that too. Uh, and this is in the first derivative. Um, I'm pretty lazy, and so I usually use my calculator, and all I care about is whether or not it's positive or negative when I put it in. So I like to test points, like I would test x equals negative 2. So this is my test. And all I want to know is, is f prime positive or negative. So if I put in negative 2, well the numerator will be positive uh, because you're squaring it. If I put in negative 2 there, um, then that would be um, whatever I get, but then I square it, and so um, do you guys agree that's positive, right? Because uh, it's positive divided by a positive. And so this is positive so that we know that it's increasing. It's going up. And, um, and then we could uh, look at the rest of them. Now, you probably noticed, um, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but did you guys notice that because I'm squaring um, x squared and I'm squaring um, the uh, x to the third plus 1 that's being squared, that no matter what you put in, 
what you put in there, negative or positive, you're going to get positive. And no matter what you have inside here, x to the third plus one, when you square it, you're going to get positive. So would you guys agree with me that, hey, this is always positive, and so I'm wanting to check each one of these regions, and maybe I don't have to get so careful going and checking all of them, noticing that they're all positive. And so um, anyway, so that's kind of my my thought on um, on um, on that and um, I was looking um, because when, when I looked, oh, I was looking at the wrong problem. It was saying that it was decreasing someplace. And I'm thinking, well, what have what thought have I got going wrong when I just told you that it, it's, it looks like it's always increasing because of the, the signs. And what I've got wrong is looking at the wrong problem in the back of the book. And I bet that's happened to you as well. So they asked us where it's increasing. And it's increasing from um, negative infinity to negative 1, and also from negative 1, I told you your book uses a comma, to 0, and also from 0 to infinity. And decreasing, they wanted me to say that too, and it's not decreasing. And so if I had a line, an underline for you to put, you know, increasing and decreasing, so it seemed like, you know, it's a good idea just to say not or never or whatever have you, just so that people know that you just didn't not answer the question. Now I'm looking for local extrema, the local max or the local min. Well, the local max and the local min is where it changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa, but you notice it's increasing always, and so there are no local extreme values. And um, your book says extrema, uh, and so I'll follow on. So there's no local extreme values. There's no local extrema. Uh, and, um, and so we did a lovely, lovely job on that. It was cool, it was wonderful. Now, in order to find where it's concave up and concave down, you have to use information regarding the, um, the second derivative. So I gave you the second derivative, and you can verify that the second derivative is 6x times 1 minus 2x to the third, uh, if you like, and uh, using the quotient rule and also the chain rule. And so that would really give you some good practice with your derivative. So I didn't find this derivative here, um, but you will need to find derivatives on the, um, on the test. And so um, if you're having trouble finding this derivative, you can look in the solution manual. They show you how to find the derivative. Um, and also, um, if you're, uh, you could reach out to me, send me an email um, that you don't know how to find this derivative, and maybe I'll make a video on it. Uh, but I thought it was one that everyone probably could find. Uh, but that's okay if you can't. So let, let, um, but you could verify those. And so uh, we're looking where the, the second derivative is equal to zero. Uh, so that's at 6x equals zero and 1 minus 2x to the third equals zero. So this gives us x equals zero. And, um, and then when I solve that, uh, negative 2x to the third equals negative 1 divided by negative 2, so I get x to the third equals half, and uh, I'm almost out of room, and that's going to be x equals the cube root of half, um, and which is uh, the same as the cube root of, um, cube root of 1 is 1 over the cube root of 2. And, um, and so those are our, um, those are, and then it's never undefined um, except for uh, at negative 1, which is not in the, right? So x double prime undefined is at x equals negative 1 again, which is not in the domain. But I do want it for my picture here. Okay, so now I'm going to make a, um, 
uh, my same little line graph. It helps me, uh, and I'm going to be testing the second derivative, and I'm going to have on there um, uh, 0 and um, the cube root of 2, uh, cube 1 over the cube root of 2. So 0 is right here on my number line, and the cube root, 1 over the cube root of 2, is right there on my number line. It's positive. Boy, that wasn't really all that great. Okay, and, um, and then negative 1 is over here. And none of these things, um, uh, uh, I would have three solutions to this if I solved it, and two of them by I could use factoring. I'd have to get pretty tricky with my factoring, but I could use factoring, and two of them would be complex, and, and then one is real. And so really, um, of my solutions, this is multiplicity one. This is multiplicity one because I would have three solutions. I just don't want the complex solutions um, there. And and then this might be a tricky multiplicity for me, right? Because I have the cube root and then I have a cube on there and whatnot. Um, I think it's odd though, and I don't think it's gonna. Um, I don't think it's gonna alternate. But we can test a few things just to make sure. So when I test negative two, so this is me testing now in my second derivative, x equals negative 2, I'm going to put that in there and all I care about is the sign. And I don't know, I'm, I'm, I've, gotten, uh, I've gotten weary and so I'm, I'm sticking it into my calculator and the calculator will tell me more than the sign, which is very kind of it, uh, but I'll be able to edit that and, um, and that's, my, that's my rationale for taking the time right now to put it in there. And so let's see here, um, and, and then I can test all of these points raised to the third here, uh, plus one, and raised to the third. So I got a positive for this. So this is positive over here, which means it's concave up. And then I'm going to test something in between negative uh, 1 and uh, 0. So negative half will be what I'll test. x equals negative half. And I'm going to see what it is. And so all I have to do is uh, go along here and um, uh, edit where I have the negative 2. And so I am doing that. And I got a negative. And so that means it's concave down here. And um, testing something between 0 and the cube root of, um, of 2, uh, 1 over the cube root of 2. And I'm like, oh my, I, I, didn't, I wish I would have figured out.